Okay, hello, my name is uh, Javier Ruiz Hidalgo. I'm a professor here, assistant professor here at UPC. I'm going to talk to you a little about uh, 3D analysis with uh, uh, deep networks. Okay. I will be very brief. Uh, basically, I will motivate a little bit about uh, the use of uh, 3D structures uh, in uh, deep learning architectures. And then I will talk about the main data model uh, used in 3D analysis, which is uh, 3D point clouds. A little bit about the data sets that you can use to uh, work with uh, point clouds. Some considerations and challenges of using point clouds in uh, deep learning architectures. The techniques that nowadays people used uh, in deep learning. And then some conclusions. I will be very brief. It's 20 minutes. Hope uh, that you can follow me. Some thanks uh, to some students that helped me with the slides. And I just copied the images. So to put them. Okay, so the main motivation about 3D, it's uh, why people are starting to use 3D in uh, deep learning architectures. It's basically for two reasons. One, it's because there are new sensors that they are cheap and they acquire 3D data from a scene. No? So I'm pretty sure you've had heard about the Microsoft Kinect sensor. No, it's a very cheap sensor that it has a camera, a normal camera, RGB camera, but also a depth camera, so the structure, the 3D structure of the scene can be recorded, okay, and very cheaply. But there are others, the structure sensor, the Carmine, they, they are more expensive one, no? like uh, LIDAR, for instance, but the appearance of that sensors uh, increased the amount of data, the 3D data that was available, and that, you know, there was a motivation to start using that data uh, to do some analysis. Okay? And then the other one, it's related to this. Okay, there were new sensor chips, so people started to add create data sets. No? And 3D data sets, I will talk a little bit about them, uh, were created and people started to use them. Yeah. And then, uh, on the other hand, there's an ongoing interest in this kind of applications, you know, the virtual uh, reality applications, augmented reality applications. No? And in that set, in virtual reality, we live in a 3D world. So this virtual or augmented reality work with 3D data. No? So all these together uh, motivated people to start using uh, 3D into deep learning. Okay? And then into the details, no? for instance, point clouds. So point clouds are a common representation of 3D data. No? So you can represent a 3D uh, with several points. And these points are usually on the surface of the objects. No? So you select points on the surface of the objects. And uh, with that collection of points, you, you define a 3D object, no? like this Actorus that you can see. Okay? And usually, these points no? are represented on a Cartesian coordinate. So you have these x, y, and z coordinates for each of the points. Understood? No? So, so this is it, no? So a 3D point cloud, it's no more than a list of points, no? And for each of these points, you have the X, Y, and Z coordinates of that point, no? And this is just a list of these points, yep? Okay? And then for each of these points, you, you can have the X, Y, Z. No, you have the X, Y, Z, but you can have an extra information, no? For instance, you can have... I don't know, the color, the RGB color of that specific point, of that specific surface, right? Or more, eh? or the orientation of that uh, surface in that point, or the curvature, or any feature that you can think of, okay? So for each point, you can have that feature that represents the properties of that point in that specific location, yeah? So this is a 3D point cloud. Eh? I need to talk a little about meshes as well. You can enrich somehow that information. Instead of only having the points, you can have the surface, the, the uh, um, a face, what it's called, no? uh, uh, the face that is in between these points. No? It's a more real representation of the structure. This is called a mesh. No? And, and, and uh, you have the points, which are called the vertexes, and then you have the faces that connect these points together. No? That this is a representation of a, of a structure that looks like this. Instead of the point, you have the, the, the faces. But right now, I will focus on the 3D point cloud, not the mesh. But at least you know 
this uh, duality of the representation. So again, eh, I, will, I will focus on, on working this, not, not the mesh. Okay, so again, now people started uh, with this representation and then several data sets appeared that allowed deep learning techniques. So to do deep learning, you need a lot of data and uh, until this moment, the 3D data was not much so you could not learn on it, but then some databases appeared with a lot of data that could be learned in a deep learning framework. So I have put some data set that I think they are very interested for you. For instance, in the uh, application of classification, there is this data set that has 10,000 scans, so really enough to do learning, and then 43 objects. So this is the mesh representation of the objects, and then you could uh, learn on this. Uh, so, for instance, to do post estimations, you, you have uh, this uh, other data set uh, that you have around 50,000 images for train and test, and you can learn the pose of different objects. And then for segmentation, you have data which is uh, outdoors, so taken with a leader, and it looks like this, or indoor sequences with a scan net. You have a lot of uh, scenes with a lot of classes that you can learn. And this is similar to the image uh, data set, no, image net. You have lots of data labeled, so you can somehow uh, train a system to do segmentation. So in another domain, which is autonomous driving, you have uh, cityscapes, no, that uh, there are five cities, 20,000 images, and also you have the depth information, so you can create these point clouds. And you have the 3D information of this. No? And then moving on, uh, you have data, a complete data, no? they, they call it for a scene understanding, and again, it's data in this house indoor that have the segmentation information, the room layout, the pose, uh, so, so a lot of labels that you can work with from different applications. And I selected this one because I think it's the more complete, it's the Stanford uh, data set, it's composed of uh, six areas, which over 6,000 uh, square meters, and, and this is all 3D, yeah? and then you have all these segmented, and, and you have the normals, the depth, and the semantic information, so again, no, a lot of data set, so people uh, could start working with it. And then, okay, what are the challenges to work with 3D data? No? The idea is that, okay, can I just use the standard architectures, AlexNet, ResNet, and plug it 3D data directly and see what happens? Unfortunately, you can't, no, because there are several differences between point clouds and images. The first uh, difference is that the neighborhood is not defined, so, so it's difficult. No? You have an image, it's easy, no? What is the neighborhood of this pixel? By connectivity, and the pixel on top, on the left, on the right, down, they are, those are the neighbors. But you go to a point cloud, you select this point, okay, which are the neighbors, no? You have to define a distance, maybe on Euclidean distance, but even if you define a, a distance, it is difficult to select the, the neighbor, no? If I go to this ear of this rabbit, and I get a, um, an Euclidean distance, okay, th these are neighbors, but maybe I select one point on the other parts of the rabbit, and maybe this is close to it, I mean, it's not part of the neighborhood, uh, what I'm trying to say is that the neighborhood is difficult to define, no? In 3D point clouds, that's, that's okay. The other one is the lattice, no? It's similar to this, but the idea is that when you define or when you use a, a convolutional layer, that you know what it is, okay, apply it in an image is very easy, no? Because we have the kernel and the kernel is defined in the neighborhood and that's it. But again, no, in the point clouds, defining this lattice is not a straightforward, no? You don't know how, what, which points should I use to do the convolution. So applying convolutions to 3D, directly to 3D point clouds is, is not possible, okay? And then the last problem I would say is the density. That depends on the sensor, but usually when you capture a 3D scene, the density, you know, the number of points that you get on surfaces which are close to the sensor, it's higher than the number of points that you get to surfaces which are farther away from the sensor, no? So the density of point is different, and if you can see, you use the same kernel to filter points which are closer, will have more points that points which are farther away, so that is also a challenge, okay? So how can we solve this? There are, at least I have selected four different techniques to solve these problems, okay? 
I will talk about this eh? until the end of my talk. I will talk about these four. But the first one is, OK, I can somehow do not use the 3D point cloud project, no, or use the, the raw information of the point cloud, use the image and the depth, which is a similar representation of a point cloud. And we can use this, which is called this 2.5D data. No, It's 2D, and I somehow added an extra information, which is the depth. I'll talk a little bit about this. And then you can treat this as images. The other solution is to voxelize, no? is to, uh, to treat the 3D plowing cloud as a discrete representation. So instead of pixels, we have voxels, which is a 3D version of a pixel. But everything is in a lattice, in a square lattice. So you can uh, extrapolate the convolution into 3D convolutions and use them. Okay? You can project, is that uh, from a 3D point cloud, I project into different images and I treat the images. And then you can somehow try to use the point clouds directly. I will talk a little bit about them, each one of them. OK, so the first one is two and a half data. The idea is to use, it's a very common um, technique. And it's because most of the 3D uh, uh, sensors, this is the raw data that they give you. No? Instead of giving you the 3D point cloud directly, what they give you is the image and a depth map. And a depth map is just an information of the depth, the distance from the, that pixel to the sensor. Okay? And this, with basic geometry, you could, with this information and geometry, you could basically create the 3D point cloud. No? I don't know, I can to draw it here. I mean, you, you have the image and, and, and you know, it has been projected from a point in the space, you know, but because of the projection into a 2D image, you don't know the depth, so if you have the depth information, you can somehow extrapolate this point into the 3D. Understood? You know how to, at least you know that from this information, you can create the 3D point cloud. So before doing this, you can stop here and treat this as two single images into any common deep learning architecture that you know. Understood? Yeah? So how can we add this depth image? No? The, the, the most common thing to do is that I add it as another channel. No? So you have the RGB three channels from an image, and then I will have a four channel image with this the RGB and the depth. No? And plug it into the network and use this. And this is very common. Eh? I mean, using this has been used uh, in many, many applications. But I have to say that recently, you know, people are starting to think, okay, it is true that it's another channel, but the depth information is in another domain of the RGB. No? It's a different domain, so adding it as a channel maybe is not that interested. And people tried, instead of adding it as a channel, you add it in another network, no? like a two-channel network. In one of the channels, you use the RGB. In the other channel, you use the depth, and then you mix them afterwards. It's a later fusion, what they call it. No? And people found out that this is better than using the four channel approximation. So always when you try to use, uh, you want to add depth information, try to think of a two channel network rather than add it as a normal channel to the network, okay? Yep, so this is about, uh, I don't know if I'm okay this time. Yes. Uh, this two and a half D, okay? The other technique is to voxelize. Huh? And to voxelize, it's pretty simple. No? Is, I have a 3D point cloud. And I discretize in a space, no, the x direction, the y direction, and the z direction. Okay, so instead of uh, points in the space, we have voxels, which is a 3D uh, abstraction of pixels. No, so in 3D, you have. A and then with this, you have a 3D approximation of an image, and you can use 3D convolutional networks to uh, apply to this. No. Uh, and the use is straightforward. The only problem that I would uh, comment to you is that, okay, maybe this voxelization is difficult to define, no? The number of voxels that you can have, uh, sometimes it's, it's, per appli it's application dependent, and it's easier to find, no? It's, um, I could tell you that it's um, another hyperparameter of your network that is difficult to tune, no? It's one, one of the problems. Uh, but again, eh, people are using it from, several years ago, so 2015, and the idea is the same, no? that you have a, a point cloud, you voxelize, and then you use 3D convolutions in order to uh, stack the layers of your network. No? So for instance, this, uh, this is quite common, the voxnet, and they are used both for classification and recognition. 
Understood? Should I move on? Okay. So two and a half D voxels or projections. No, the other idea is okay. We cannot work directly with point clouds. What we can do is project these point clouds into images, and then use these images uh, on the network. Okay. Uh, so, for instance, I have been working on this a little bit. Uh, and the idea is that we had two point clouds and we want to register them. So we have to, to find points in the point cloud which were the same in the two point clouds. Okay. And in order to do that, we can select a point, project it into an image, and then try to find if these two images are the same or not. No? But the idea is to use projection. Eh? Is to select two random points, project them, and then compare the two images that results of the projection. No? This is the idea. Okay. Uh, so, so people have been using this. Now, for instance, these guys try to do recognition of 3D point cloud, and for that, they uh, created a virtual array of cameras no? around the object. They project the object into all of these uh, cameras, and then at the end, what they have is n images that they can use you know, to feed a straight uh, network with convolutional layers and then do the classification, okay? Yep. Of course, no, what are the problems of this is that the amount of data is greater, no? You have to create n render views of the uh, point cloud. You have to feed it, so the number of views is also a hyperparameter that you have to tune, un, et cetera, no? But the idea is to use a standard uh, architectures with, with images, okay? And then just to let you know, but um, there are studies that says that in between these two main techniques, voxelization or projection, seems that projection works a little bit better than voxelization, okay? So, I don't know, this did some tests and they found out that uh, creating uh, images and project uh, 3D points into images seems to work better. Okay? But also I have to say that people are closing the gap. Eh? People are starting to do clever things with voxels and they are closing this gap with the projection. For instance, these guys uh, did something clever, I would say. No? Instead of voxelizing and, and, and do the prediction, they voxelize uh, different views of the 3D point cloud, okay, in different positions. And then they did the classification, they do a late fusion, and they depredict, no? And this is better than this, okay? So th this is like trying to do the network independent of rotation, no? By doing several uh, instances of the point cloud. Understood? Yeah? Okay, so I go to the last one, no? Let me, let me go back. It is, it is. We have seen this, no? Straightforward solution within the raw data, voxelize, project. Now the idea is, okay, can we work directly with point clouds, no? C can we not invent something and use a network? We won't be able to use convolutions, okay, but can we use any other things? And yes, yes we can, no? And people have tried this, this try to use the, the point clouds, this list of points directly, no? Uh, for instance, one, uh, keys the, this point net uh, architecture. I mean, These this guys presented it last year and they created a, a network that the input was directly this list of points and they use it for classification and semantic segmentation. L let's do the classification, let's, let's review the classification part. And the network looks like this. Of course, they, they don't have any convolution. No, they, they cannot because the lattice is not defined, the, the, the neighbors are not defined, so they can use, they use basically uh, multi-layer perceptions directly, no? fully connected layers, and, and that's it. But the, the, they did some clever things, so I'm going to review them to you. So the first input of the network, so the input of the network now is a list of points. So n points times 3, because x, y, z, okay? Maybe we, you can use RGB, it will be n plus 6, no? the 6 components. But the first one is an input transform, and this, what this input transform does, doesn't really matter what it is, see? but what it does is it's a mini network to try to be independent of rotation. No? One of the problems is that if, if you rotate the 3D point cloud, the X, Y, Z coordinates of the points will change. 
No? And if they change, uh, you want to be independent of that change because the classification is the same. I mean, if it's a chair and you rotate the chair, it's a still a chair. No? So you want to be independent of this uh, rotation. So this mini network first learns a transformation to be a rotation transformation to be independent of it. So all of the data that you feed it to the network will get rotated to the same position. No? That, that's the idea. Okay? And then with that idea also, you have this uh, network that, that is similar. No? That you extract a feature also independent of this uh, rotation. No? So you have a, another a network that uh, extracts features of these points independent of the rotation, and then at the end you can stack some uh, linear layers uh, and then mix them together to, to extract a, a global feature. But the idea that I want you to keep is that, okay, we can use this list of points. You have to be careful with the rotation independence, okay? But at the end you can classify, and they did uh, some classification, I was working, is working fine, okay? The other thing that I want to commend you, this is also very new. There's another way to work directly with 3D point clouds, which is by using these graph convolutional networks. Okay? I don't know if you have heard about them, but these graph convolutional networks, you can see them as an extension of convolutions. Okay? In a convolution, the neighbors are defined. No? A three by three kernel uses the three by three neighbors of the pixel. right? In the graph uh, neural network, the convolution is extended so the neighbors are defined by a graph. No? So the idea, I don't know if you can see it here, but the idea is that when we have this point of the graph, the neighbors will be the connected points with this graph, these three. No? When you have this point, the neighbors will be these five. Okay? So the graph defines, by the edges, no? defines the connectivity of each of the elements of the graphs. No? This is like the extension of the convolution. They also extend the pooling, no? so when you pull the, the elements and you reduce the dimension of the image no? to, in order to do classification, you can also define pooling on graphs to reduce the dimension of the graph, things like this. Okay? And with this in mind, I don't want to delve into the details uh, now, but this, of course, you can think of a 3D point cloud transformed into a graph no? by the neighborhood, maybe the, the Euclidean distance, so you can define neighborhoods of the points with the graph and then apply these graph neural networks in order to do whatever application. No? So for instance, this is what uh, they did. No? So they used 3D uh, graph neural networks to do uh, semantic segmentation of a scenes. But the idea is this one, eh? the idea is that th they have the point cloud with the neighborhood no, with an Euclidean distance of the point, they define a graph, so they connect some points which are close to each other. Okay? For each of the points, they put a feature, not the color, they were more clever than this, so they use a standard CNN network to create the features of each of the points in the point cloud. So at the end, they have a graph no, with relationships, and each of the points of the graph has a feature vector extracted from a CNN. No? That's, a, that's the idea. And then they applied a, a graph neural network okay, with several layers, and, and they did the prediction with this. No? But the idea is, and this is very new, and people, not only these ones, eh, people are starting to work with uh, graphs, with 3D point clouds translated into graphs. Okay? Yes. Yes. What is the problem? No, 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 because this, this is done outside of the network. Eh? Uh, this is a good question. No, no, no. The, maybe I, I wasn't clear enough. The idea is that you have the 3D point clouds, and then you build a graph outside of the network. No? And with this graph, you feed it to the network. Yes, yes. If not, it's not possible. Yeah. Maybe the, the trick that they did here for me is that, okay, because they, they were coming from an image, no? To create the point cloud, they were using an image, they could use standard CNNs to extract the features, no? And, and then you could do this because of this. If we used, no? If you want to use a sensor which directly gives you a 3D point cloud, 
then you won't be able to extract features with a, with a CNN. You will have to only do this. Okay? No, no, but that was a good question. Understood? Yeah? This is very new, eh, I would say. Uh, but that's it from my part. Uh, yeah, I think that's okay. Um, as a conclusion, I would say, remember, no, 3D point clouds is a very rich representation. Nowadays, uh, it's starting to be widely used, no, because of these virtual reality applications, augmented reality applications. People are very interested in 3D. Also, autonomous driving, no, uh, to drive cars. They're working on 3D a lot. Uh, and the techniques are these ones. Eh? You cannot fit it straight into a, a standard network. So either you use this RGBD data, you voxelize, you project and use images, or you use a very new techniques uh, directly with uh, multi-layer perceptions or by using graphs. Okay? And that's it from my part. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them.